Greetings, everyone, once again. Uh, I want us to continue with the with the, the series of the Word of God that we've been doing. Uh, today, I want us to consider the Word of God, our daily food. The Word of God, our daily food. Uh, we had seen before the power of the Word of God. Uh, the Word of God has truth and its sanctifying power. And today, I would want us to consider this very important uh, as well, the Word of God as our daily food. Let me go to immediately the book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 4, Christ speaks about something very interesting to uh, uh, to to note with as we begin. Christ says uh, in Matthew four four. Uh, this is what he says. He has had Satan. This is at his at his temptation when Christ is being tempted by Satan. This is the answer that is given. Uh, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Very interesting uh, that uh, this is uh, how uh, really Christ uh, respond to the enemy at his temptation. And uh, Deuteronomy 8.3 has something very interesting. It says that man shall not live by bread alone. Remember, we are considering uh, uh, the word of God, our daily bread. And so... Getting back to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 8, verses 3. Um, the experience of the children of Israel. This is what uh, it, is, it, is, it says. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know. Um that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only. So he suffered them to anger, then gave them manna, that they should understand that man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So man will live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Our daily experience, uh, uh, just as we have food as our daily uh, most urgent need, then uh, we are expected also to make the word of God our daily food, just as um, <clears throat> God, God suffered them, gave them manna, and we will see how he gave them manna morning and evening. And that was to show them that man shall not live by bread alone, but rather by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. In Jeremiah 15, verses 16, Jeremiah also speaks of the word of God as food because he says, uh, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and they were unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. So the word of God, he refers to it as food because it is only food that is eaten. Yeah, so he says, thy words were found and I did eat them and they were unto me uh, the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. That is uh, well taken that uh, the word of God is food and uh, we want to see how it should be our daily food just as um, we eat our daily food for strength, for physical strength and having good health. So even us, uh, even with, uh, with the spiritual, uh, it is 
it is very important to know that the word of God is <clears throat> food. And we've talked of the word of God as Christ, the divine word. Uh, we handled that the very first beginning. So as Christ, the, 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 the divine word, and you're also seeing uh, uh, the spiritual food that we need to eat, uh, have an experience with daily then uh maybe perhaps if i get time i'll do uh, uh, another 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 uh, another sharing about uh uh the indwelling word how uh, we can be partakers of divine nature through the word by the word of god and so <clears throat> we can have the life of christ by the word of god and so i want us to i want to take you through the bible and uh, uh, see how uh, how sacrifices, daily sacrifices. Remember, we say that the word of God, our daily bread. And so, our daily sacrifices was done <clears throat> uh, uh, in the sanctuary services. That is a First Chronicles sixteen. That is where I want to begin. First Chronicles sixteen. The word of God, our daily food. Don't forget about that. Uh, in uh, First Chronicles 16, verses 39 and 40. Uh, <clears throat> 39 and 40, it says, And Zadok the priest, I, I should, uh, as I read this, you should remember that Christ is our high priest. is in the heaven sanctuary uh, 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 making uh, doing atonement, bringing us into connection with God. And so he says, And Zadok the priest and his brethren the priest before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place that was at Gibeon to offer burnt offering unto the Lord. So they were offering burnt offering unto the Lord uh, upon the altar of burnt offering continually. So they were doing this continually morning and evening a daily experience morning in fact if you go to genesis uh the bible says morning and evening and it was a day it was counted a day so we see a burnt offering i mean the sacri this the sanctuary sacrifices were offered um morning and evening continually daily it was a daily experience even as we partake of the word of God and uh, as we have this experience, it should be continually um, morning and evening. Why? Because our high priest Christ Jesus is pleading for us and we have to uh, uh, make sacrifices of the word and uh, by prayers uh, with this experience. Also in uh, in the books, we can confirm as well in the book of uh, uh, the same Second Chronicles, uh, 2 verses 4, I guess, 2 verses 4. <clears throat> this is what it says, Second Chronicles 2, 4. Um, Behold, I build an house to the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to him and to burn before him sweet incense and for the continual Shoe bread, shoe bread in the sanctuary represented the word of God. And so it says he was doing that. He was presenting shoe bread, the offering of the shoe bread, uh, continually. And for burnt offering, morning and evening, and on Sabbaths, and on the new moons, and on the solemn feast, and on and the Lord our God, uh, feast of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever and ever. Uh, for Israel. And so uh, we see the sacrifice, the, the shoe bread, uh, which represent the word of God. Bread in the sanctuary was the word of God. And the burnt offering was both morning and evening. We know that uh, upon the Sabbath, the word of God is there. But yes, uh, a daily experience with the word of God is very important, preparing us for that experience of the Sabbath of um, having the word of God. And so we see this in the Bible, in the Bible uh, history, and uh, actually in the daily sacrifices of, of the sanctuary. 
and we are having a a, a great high priest um, doing the work in the heavenly sanctuary and our sacrifices are to ascend to him day and night. I mean, continually having daily experience uh, with the word of God. Uh, let me look at the example of David. David had a, a, a beautiful experience uh, with the uh, a beautiful experience with the uh, uh, daily beautiful daily experience uh, with the word of God and communion with heavens, uh, uh, which is very interesting. Psalms fifty five, the daily experience that David had, and uh, this to me it's a good example that I will want to copy. I mean, I'll also show us the experience or rather the, the example of Christ. But David also has a, a good example here. It says in verses 17, and these are some of David, chapter 55. So I'm very sure it's David. It says, evening and morning and at noon. Evening at, and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. So evening and morning and noon, that is throughout the day, uh, is having an experience with the heavens, uh, praying to the Lord uh, by prayers. He's offering his sacrifice of prayer. And we'll, not, we'll see that it was not only the sacrifice of prayer that he was offering. In Psalms 5, a common verse that you're used to, in Psalms 5, uh, in Psalms 5, 3, he says, My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. So in the morning he was raising his voice uh, with the sweet songs uh, that will ascend to God. Oh Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer and he, he will direct his prayer uh, unto thee and will look up. So he was uh, focusing on heavens. By beholding, we become changed. So David wanted to have an experience with Jesus Christ. He would behold the lovely uh, image of Jesus Christ uh, daily so that his character would be transformed daily to be as that of Christ. And that is why we find that he was the closest friend of Christ, or of God, as, as the Bible says. Yeah, but this, it was not by uh, accident. Uh, it was... Uh, and a relationship that was built on a daily basis. It was a relationship that uh, was not just uh, by chance. Our relationship with God uh, is built that we are ha having experience with him daily with his word, offering prayers, uh, songs of praise. And uh, that is what we see with the experience of David, uh, uh, as we also, also consider the experience of Christ. Now, in 92 of Psalms, also we get uh, something very interesting. Uh, 92 of Psalms, I just want to take you through and see experiences of the people. In the sanctuary uh, back then, uh, we see that uh, how the continual sacrifice, daily sacrifice, and uh, we've seen that the word of God should be our daily food. Uh, uh, -huh. uh That is Psalms 92. <clears throat> Verses 1. This is uh, also a psalm or song for the Sabbath day. It says, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name almost high. To shew forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. This is, was the experience of David. But the most loved experience of David is in Psalms 119, 147. The most ex uh, lovely experience, this one I have read over and over and asked God, will you give me this experience? Um, this is what it says. Uh, this is also a Psalms 119. He says, I cried with my whole heart, hear me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. Mm -hmm. I cry unto thee, save me, and I shall keep thy testimonies. Now, listen to 147, very 
interesting and very nice point. I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried and hoped in thy word. Wow, two things. He prevented the dawning of the morning. I mean, he wakes up at dawn uh, to have what? To cry unto the Lord, to pray unto the Lord. And not only that, I hoped in thy word so he's having an experience with god by uh, prayers and also by uh reading the word of god hoping in the word of god uh, verses 148 my eyes prevented night watches so that i might meditate in thy word amen so his uh i mean his eye he prevented the night watches i mean at evening he would uh you will not just be lazy to go sleep early, but you will uh, uh, to go uh, sleep early. He prevented the night watches that I might hope I meditate in thy word. Very interesting. So we see David having a, a daily experience, a continual daily experience with the word of God, which is very amazing. And uh, this was a, uh, a very beautiful experience. I prevented the dawning of the morning that I might hope in thy word. The power of the word of God. The word of God, uh, our daily bread. Now, allow me to take us to the experience of Christ. Have you ever wondered, uh, uh, have you ever thought that Christ also had an experience of, with the word of God uh, daily, daily? That is Mark 135. Mark 135. Uh, we want to see something here. Uh, Mark 135. I hope this will interest us uh, as families, as, as individuals, to um to have an experience with Jesus Christ daily. Uh, have time for Jesus. Uh, this is Mark 135 is what it says and in the morning rising up a great while before day in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed that is christ he went departed into a solitary place and then prayed and from thence uh, in the side of ages we told that that is where he got his strength for the day and he would heal people. He would uh, do all these things because he was having an experience with Je with God, his Father. Uh, in the morning, he would he would hope in the Word of God. He would meditate upon the Word of God. He would pray, uh, seeking for the di divine power, uh, anointment of the Holy Spirit. We'll read that in a while. Uh, let's see the experience of Christ again in Isaiah. Isaiah proceeds this how Christ will is dedicated uh, to have an experience with God, uh, to have an experience with God in the morning. Uh, Isaiah 50, uh, verses 4. 50 verses 4. This, the, the Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learning that I should know how to speak a word in season. This is the experience of Christ. To him that is weary, he wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. Wow. Hear the learned how? Because you would uh, actually uh, listen to the word of God. What does the word of God say? And uh, uh, text what the word of God says. And how that experience says that you will awaken at me morning by morning. Uh uh, he awakened my ear to hear as the learned. Did you know that that was the experience of Jesus Christ? Let me show you in a lovely book, um, Steps to Christ. Sorry, uh, the lovely book, uh, COL 139. COL 139. That is Christ Object Lesson 139. See how, see how the experience of Jesus Christ was. I hope.
Yeah, so this is uh this is a CRL Christ object lesson. This is what it says Christ was continually receiving from the Father that he might communicate to us. Christ was continually receiving from the Father that he might communicate to us. Wow. The word which I hear, he said, is not mine, but the Father which sent him. The Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, not for himself, but for others. He lived and thought and prayed. Wow. He lived and thought and prayed. You know, this is the experience of Christ, daily, continual uh, experience that he was having with his father to continually receive that he might communicate to us. From hours spent with God, I would want you to consider that. From hours spent with God, he came forth morning by morning, the light of heaven to men. He came forth morning by morning. Uh, to bring the light of heaven to men. Daily, he received, I hope you are seeing here, daily he received fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. In early hours of the new day, the Lord awakened, awakened him from his slumbers, and his soul and his lips were anointed with grace that he might impart to others. His words were given him fresh from the heavenly courts, what that words that he might speak in season to the weary and oppressed. The Lord God hath given me, he said, the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in uh to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by walking, morning he wakeneth my ear as uh, the learned. And so we see how uh, Christ is having a lovely experience with the word of God. Um, uh, uh, daily communion, daily receiving fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit as a result of communion with God, daily having an experience with him morning by morning throughout the day and uh, so that you'll get what to uh, actually share with us uh, as a uh, as uh, the, the grace that you will share with those who are following him. And so that is uh, very interesting to see the example of Jesus Christ. I want, uh, I want to finish at this point and uh, raising family altars. Um, this is something that Satan has worked to destroy in our homes. We do have, have altars where sacrifices, morning and evening sacrifices are Raise unto the Lord. But listen to what God tells uh, Joshua uh, in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 8. Joshua, chapter 1, verses 8. Just finishing here, having seen the example of Christ, which is a supreme example. Uh, let's see. Uh, raising family altars. Remember, we are speaking about the word of God, our daily food, our daily bread. Uh, raising family altars. This book of the law, that is Joshua 1, 8, says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. So God is giving instruction to Joshua. He's going to lead his family. He's going to be the priest of the house. He tells him that this book of the law, the word of God, should not uh, depart from thee. Thou shalt meditate uh, thereupon with your family. Uh, and you will guide the children of Israel to do so, to meditate upon it day and night. Uh, day and night, uh, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have a good success. So for us to succeed in our spiritual experience with Christ, for us to perfect holiness, in the fear of God, then we are to uh, raise family altars where God is honored, uh, and uh, we 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 share the word of God. We have an experience with the word of God. We get fresh baptism 
of the word and through prayers, uh, uh, we, 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 we see this. Allow me to just, I'm seeing my 30 minutes over which I wanted to use. Allow me to just read this final quotation from, um, from, uh, from C Child Guidance, Raising Family Altars, Raising Family Altars. Raising family altars. This is a uh, C G five from um, seventeen. Five seventeen paragraph one. Let me get there. Yeah, so this is it. Uh, raising family altars, raising family altars. Uh, this is where I want to end. And we've seen, I, I, I mean, we've seen just the, 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 the importance. And I, I believe this is just a, a snack of what we've uh, really shared at large. The need of family prayer. Every family should rear altar of prayer. Every family should rear altar of prayer. Realizing that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If any person, if any person in the world needs the strength and encouragement that religion gives, it, it is those who are responsible for the training and uh, the education and training of children. They cannot do their work in manner acceptable to God while their daily example, look at this, their daily example teaches those who look to them for guidance that they can live without God. If they educate their children to live for this life only, they will make no preparation for eternity. They will die as they have lived without God and parents will be called to account for the loss of their souls. Fathers, mothers need to seek God I want, I want us to see this very clearly. I told fathers, where is this? Fathers, mothers need to seek God morning and evening at the family altars, raising family altars that you may learn how to teach your children wisely, tenderly, lovingly. Family worship neglected. Um, in If ever there was a time when... Every house should be a house of prayer. Every house should be a house of prayer. It is now. Infidelity and uh, skepticism prevail. Iniquity abounds. Corruption flows in the vital currents of the soul. And rebellion against God's God breaks out in the life enslaved by sin. The moral powers are under the tyranny of Satan. The soul is made the spot of his temptation. And unless some might arm it, stretch out to rescue him, man goes where? The act rebel leads the way. That is certain. And yet, um, in this time of fearful peril, some who profess to be Christians have no family worship. Have no family worship. They do not honor God in their home. They do not teach their children to love and fear him. Many have separated themselves so far from him that feel under the condemnation in approaching him. They cannot Come boldly unto the throne of grace, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. They have not a living connection with God. There is a form of godliness without power. The idea that prayer is not essential is not of Satan's most successful devices to ruin souls. Prayer is communion with God, the fountain of wisdom, the source of strength and peace and happiness. So uh, this book, uh, I just wanted us to see... Uh, that uh, there is need of a family, the father being the priest of the house. Even in the absence of the father, the mother can still start to raise up the family altar, family altar, where we know what happens at the altar. Sacrifices are made. Our high priest is uh, making intercession for us and we need to cooperate with him. We have, need to have daily experience with him that will draw us closer to 
to God and make us have uh, an ex an ex a relationship, a long lasting ex relationship. Uh, my 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 mother once told me that uh, for you to build a relationship, there should be a continual uh, communication. I mean, communication builds relationship, and so our relationship with God is based on how are we having an experience with Him. And so when you realize that the Word of God, which brings the life of Christ uh, in our life, that gives us the life of Christ, is a daily food then we will endeavor to make it our daily food, just as we will have our daily food. God bless you. Uh, thank you for your time. Let's pray. Father Divine, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your word. Pray, Lord, that uh, you will, having seen this lovely experience, you will uh, raise us to consider having a continual daily experience with you through your word, your presence and your blessings be with us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.